fans, today we're going to have a look at using the ESM monophonic synth in Logic. You can see that to begin with I've called up a single instance of this synth here directly in the instrument slot so that we're not actually using any of the processing that's available to us via any inserts. Now the ESM synth is a subtractive synth so it's got an oscillator section here which creates the raw harmonically rich waveforms and then we use the filter section to filter those wave shapes to end up with the eventual sound that we're after. The output section here determines the volume and dynamics. So first let's just have a quick look at the interface itself and uh, look at the different sections. On the left hand side here you've got the oscillator section that basically can generate two different waves. On the far left hand side here we've got a sawtooth wave which will sound like this quite buzzy sort of sound and if I move over to the far right hand side we get a rectangle wave I can use the mix control to achieve a balance between them you probably noticed that the rectangle wave is also an octave lower, always sounds an octave lower than the sawtooth wave on the right hand side. I'm going to choose a setting that's kind of in the middle. So what are these buttons about here? These buttons determine the octave range that the instrument will play in. So the highest is 8 here, so I'm choosing the same pitch just to demonstrate. 16 is an octave lower and 32 is an octave lower again. The remaining control for us to look at then is this glide button and this determines the speed at which we can move from or glide from one note to another. I'll give you an example here. If I play these two notes an octave apart, you can see it's moving very swiftly from one note to another. If I turn up the glide control, you can see it takes a longer time to reach the second note. The next section for us to have a look at is the filter section over here. Now the main two controls we've got here are the cutoff control, which determines the low pass filter cutoff frequency, so the point at which we start cutting frequencies. And then we've got the resonance control here. This control boosts or cuts the portions of the signal that surround the frequency, which we've defined by the cutoff parameter. Let me give you an example. Okay, if we have a listen to this little groove here, reducing the high frequencies that we can hear. Now if I boost up the resonance point, you'll hear the effect that has around the cutoff. Especially as we open up the cutoff filter, we get more harmonically rich sounds. This section here determines how we can use the filter over time and the time is determined by the decay here or over velocity. Now if this control which is the intensity or depth of that frequency is over to the left hand side any changes we make here won't have any effect at all. I can play a note, demonstrate, move these controls around doesn't make any difference at all. As I turn up the intensity here, you can hear that the filter is opening and closing quite quickly. That's determined here. This is the speed of that decay. As I move over to the right hand side, you can hear that that 
filter is opening and closing more and more slowly. This control here determines how velocity will affect the filter, so depending on how hard or soft you hit it, an individual note. Finally then we've got the output section here. Now in this section we are determining the overall volume of the whole instrument, that's here. Then we're de determining the decay time, this is basically a single sort of ADSR control. And then we're also determining how sensitive to velocity the instrument will be in terms of volume. So how well it responds or not to how hard you hit the note. So let's have a little tour around this and see how this works. If I move right over to the left hand side, you can see we get no more than a tiny little click because we've got such a short decay time. As I move over to the right hand side, we're getting longer and longer decay times and effectively sustain and release time as well. Sustain time, not release time. So this is our overall volume, and this control here will determine how sensitive the instrument is to velocity. Then finally, over on the right hand side here, we've got an overdrive control, and this is going to add extra harmonics, fatness and dirtiness to your sound. As you can hear. So there you have it, the mighty fine ESM synth. Have fun with it. She's a model and she's looking good. I'd like to take her home, that's understood. She plays hard to get, she smiles from time.